I'm gonna try not making this long, but bear with me. I have nothing new on the rare breed situation other than to say, as far as like the court case, like no, no information at all. Like as soon as I see something, no, I will share it. Uh, I did see that over on Whisper Tactical, he's got that comparable between the Graves Art, the uh, wide open trigger and the forced reset trigger. It's worth a watch. And then in regard to this Larry Vickers thing, which I didn't plan on getting off on this, but that's kind of a, it's a big deal, you know, at least on the surface, it certainly looks like it. And I saw John Crump's video and I would say that that's probably the most likely scenario Compliance doesn't seem to be it. The only I did think compliance only because when you're sick, like your hierarchy of values doesn't change, but like lower values, like material items that aren't necessary to your immediate survival, kind of fall into the uh, not as important realm because you're trying to survive. Like I don't know the depths of his uh, health situation on how bad it is or not, but like I've been in around enough situations and had health issues on my own to know that like. Your SOT isn't the first thing on your mind when you wake up in the morning. Whether or not you engrave something is probably not going to be the first thing on your mind or sent your form in. It's not going to be the first thing on your mind when you're dealing with life and death, right? So, assuming that he let the license run out and that this was maybe part of the plan, like, I don't know if it was a thing like, hey, I'm going to get it taken care of, but like, I'm in the hospital or I'm dealing with this or I'm dealing with that. And they're like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it because, you know, bureaucrats, oh, don't don't worry about it. Everything be fine. We take... When really, oh, well, but the procedure says, and we got you after the fact. I don't know if it was that or, or if it was legitimately, but here's why I see a problem. When you have 250-odd post samples, that's a lot of money. Now, I don't know how much money this man has or not, but arguably this is a million to $2 million worth of post samples in all reality. Um, Two ways to look at this. One, like when you're closing up an SOT, SOTs tend to sell off their post samples and, and turn a significant profit. Uh, whether it be post samples you manufactured yourself without a law letter, or, and these are where you start really, when you're dealing with hard to get or you can't get a, a post sample from the manufacturer at all that's fully automatic, like guns that you can make fully auto that are hard, uh, those are the guns definitely other SOTs are going to get. Like, it's not hard to make an AR-15 full auto, but, you know, it, it, it gets increasingly harder with this particular HK, especially if you're talking about two and three round bursts and shit like that. Like, it depends. But my here, to, to make it clearer, like, let's say it's a CZ Scorpion, and you get a law letter from your local sheriff that they want a demonstration of a fully automatic CZ Scorpion. So you go and you get your law letter, you get the Scorpion. The Scorpion costs give or take five ten percent different from the semi-automatic version so like there's no real difference in price right like i i think you could get a scorpion fully automatic scorpion well under two thousand dollars from the manufacturer if they're still available or not i don't know that's not the point point is is that same cz scorpion if you're closing out an sot and you're able to sell that the law letter goes with the scorpion the sot buying it doesn't have to have a law letter because the law letter goes with that post sample that you got with your law letter so and they're going to pay anywhere from seven, eight, up to $15,000 for that CZ Scorpion. And they pay it. Trust me, they do. Um, so my point is, is that you're talking about potentially millions of dollars worth of post samples that were seized. Now, maybe Larry Vickers has millions and millions of dollars and a few million dollars isn't going to hurt him. But even if that was the case... I would think with the historic value of a lot of these post samples and just here, like Ian from Forgotten Weapons, I can't imagine that he wouldn't find great value in those over them being surrendered. So that's where I see, I hope you guys can see the picture I'm painting here, that it just does not seem reasonable. And, and I would think that those would at the very least be donated to an SOT that would preserve them, right? Now, I don't know, maybe he has something hooked up with the ATF and it's going to some museum for all I know. Hell, if I know, I don't know. I'm just painting a picture here. I've made the video way too long, but this is what I have to add this morning. I figured I, it was important enough to do a follow-up because no matter what anybody thinks about the man, the man's been important in this industry and something like this is a, is a I would think, a pretty big deal. Anyway... 
have fun. Sorry the little video is so long. Like I'm trying to get out information that maybe is at least useful to give context when other situations like these come up, or at least to know to ask the right questions. Have fun.